she wanted a, a grill till her dying day. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's all stand. How many's glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Well, that was okay. But how many's glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Let's clap our hands and magnify him. He's worthy of our praise. Lord Jesus, we praise you, God. We magnify you, God. Bless this service. Touch us right now, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. There are some things.
If you know your God is real today, just lift your hands and magnify him. Lord Jesus, we love you, God. We're thankful today, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What can
Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands and let's keep loving him today. Oh, Jesus, we're thankful, God. We're so thankful for your blood. We're thankful for your power and your strength. We're thankful for your forgiveness, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand praise today. Hallelujah. I know that we can do better than that. Let's magnify the Lord. Lord Jesus, we love you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. The blood, the blood affects you in every single way. In our earthly body, if we have deficiencies that are in our blood, if we have low iron, if we have low whatever, magnesium or whatever, some of the things that people have, it will make you weak and it will make you feel like you, you cannot do anything. And then the blood of Jesus, it is our spiritual power that we have. And if you don't have the blood of Jesus or, or if you're neglecting the blood of Jesus, then it's going to make you weak and it's going to make you feel like that you can't do anything. Hallelujah. But I'm here to submit you today that it just lift your hands right now and let's ask the Lord to bless this service, to bless ourselves, to bless our neighbors, to bless our family. Let's ask the Lord to move in this service. Lord Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. God, we give you praise. We magnify you, Jesus. Paul told the Ephesian church, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. We are redeemed. We are purchased. We are bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm glad it will never lose its power. I'm glad, thank God for the blood. It will never lose its power. Let's go to the Lord today. We have many needs to take before the Lord. Several folks that are not feeling well. Sister Adams, Sister Cindy Adams, we need a prayer today. And it's the Lord to touch her. Sister Birchfield spoke with her yesterday. In need of God's touch. Sister Duncan, still sick. We need to pray and ask God to touch her. Sister Rhodes, and then lift her up in prayer. Sister Chapel's not feeling well today, so let's pray for her. Brother McKimmy has been moved. He is no longer in Camden Clark. He's now in the village up here in Ravenswood. That's the one right next to the uh, Parmar Station. And uh, he is up there. We'll be there for several days uh, going through therapy and so let's pray that God strengthens him physically they have had him up he's been out in the hall walking so we thank God for that and uh, he is determined to get out of there quick so uh, let's lift up brother McKimmy and ask the Lord to touch him and let's pray for sister Wyatt sister Lois that God would touch her and minister to her, Sister Carol Massey, Sister Pettit, Brother Brent. By the way, Brother Brent got a great report from the doctor. He went to the cardiologist the other day, and they were very concerned about issues with his heart. And the doctor told him that his heart was very strong and in great shape. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Praise God. So that's a great report, and we thank the Lord for that. You got an unspoken need today? Slip your hand up. Is there anyone that, that I didn't mention that is sick that I need to mention? Oh, Sister Lindsay's sick. Sister Lindsay, let's pray for her. Was there anybody else I, I missed that's not well? It's good to see Sister Stevens today. We're glad she's better. Thank God for that. Good to see Sister Sowards back there. Wasn't well, and we're sure glad she's here. 
Thank the Lord for that. Let's pray over this service that God's will be done today. God will do a perfect work in this place. Let's pray. God, in your great name, Lord, we give you glory. Oh, God, we give you glory. We thank you, Jesus, for the blood of Calvary, for the blood that washes our sins away, for the blood that brings a deliverance into our lives. I pray, God, today, Lord, and plead the blood over every family. I plead the blood over every home. I plead the blood over every saint of God in the name of Jesus. Let the blood cover us, Lord. Let it be a protection. Let it be a barrier from the enemy. Let it be a barrier, oh God, to sickness. I pray right now, oh God, the covering of your blood over our church, our church family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray today, God, every hand that was raised, that, Lord, you minister to whatever need we brought today. Whatever we've walked into the house of the Lord with, God, you know about it. And, Lord, we pray in your mighty name that, God, you touch. Whether we're the, whether we're the oldest or the youngest, it doesn't matter. God, we need you to move in our lives. We need you, God, to minister to our needs. I'm so thankful, God, we can call upon you. I pray healing for the sick today. Touch Sister Chapel and Brother McKimmy, God. Let your hand be upon them. Carolyn Starkey, I pray healing. Sister Wyant, I pray, Lord, that you would touch her for Lindsay, for the Sister uh, Petta and Sister Massey, for Brother Brent, Sister Rhodes, Sister Duncan, Sister Birchfield, Sister Adams, and all the others in need of healing. I pray you get a hold of those, God, away from you, those who become lukewarm, warm and cold, those who backslid and walked away from God, those we've been witnessing to, oh God, I pray, let their hearts be so tender to the voice of God. I pray today, Lord, give us great revival and an outpouring of your spirit in a harvest of lost souls. We pray in Jesus' name we pray, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. would you come? If you'd like to be prayed for today, would you come?
just thank God for answering prayer. Lord, we worship you, God. You're a prayer answering God. So, Lord, there's no doubt today that prayers have all, answers have already been dispatched from heaven. So, God, today we believe you, Lord, and praise you for your healing touch, for your saving touch. For God, you're answering our prayers. We praise you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sister Tina, would you take these prayer requests and pray over them in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, you may be seated. Praise the Lord, everybody. Are you thankful today? Praise the Lord. We'd like for the ushers to come. So we lift our tithes and our offering. Brother Carl, would you ask for the blessing of the tithes and offering? Praise the Lord. It's time. It's time to hear from the Lord of the, the word of the Lord. Amen. Now, we all know that Brother Johnston has sought the Lord for any time that he comes up here. He sought the Lord for a message and he brings it to us. Amen. But on even on top of what Brother Johnston is bringing forth, I, I woke up this morning with the urgency in my heart about being bold. We got so many people trying to tell us what to do. They'll send you emails. They'll tell you anything and everything about how you should live your life. Amen? But I'm here to submit to you right now. The only thing that matters to me is what the Word of God says and what this man brings forth. That's the only thing that I'm going to live by. So let's all stand. And everyone say, God bless, and we love you, Brother Johnston. Let's give a big hand clap to the Lord. Shout unto the Lord. God, we give you praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your great name, Jesus. Amen. You can be seated for a moment before we get started today. I'm thinking they got me on the floor early today. They must think I've got a long message. So they 
wanted me to get a head start on preaching today. I want to say a couple things before I get to the word of the Lord today. First of all, I want to commend this church on your giving. You are so faithful, so faithful in your giving to the uh, the work of God to in, in your tithing uh, that belongs to God and your offerings and missions and uh, continuing to give to the building fund and so forth. You, you are uh, such a giving church, and I commend you on that. I commend you. You, you, you love God, and you understand um, the things of the kingdom, and so I, I, I very much want to honor you because of that and thank you for it. And the second thing I want to I want to say today is, um, and they're not in here, um, but I want to say how much I appreciate uh, Sister Pettit and those that are work with our Sunshine Kids, and what a blessing that has been uh, to our kids. Go ahead, it's all right. What a blessing that is to our children and in teaching them and helping them in the things of God. This, this was really uh, born out of the heart of Sister Pettit to do this. And uh, she's kind of uh, pulled some of the rest of you in. Um, uh, but you, you've stepped in to help. And even right now, Sister Charlotte's back there. And they're working on some things. And, of course, Sister Missy and whoever else is back there helping with the uh, Christmas program that the kids are going to do. And I'm so excited about that. I, I'm, a, I'm about as excited about that as I am anything. And uh, watching our kids get up here and um, act out the scriptures uh, is a great thing. And so, uh, but I appreciate them. And I want to honor them for that and uh, thank them for everything that they do with our sunshine kids. Amen. Let me say again how good it is to see Sister Sowards back there. My, how we miss you when you're not here. We thank God for you. We've got so many of our folks that are unable to be here today uh, due to uh, not feeling well. Some of them want to just be cautious uh, and not be around other people for a little bit and uh, so forth. We understand that. And uh, so we do miss them when they're not here. I'm sure they're watching online, by the way. Let's make all of our online congregation welcome. We, I, I want to say also how much I appreciate these, these men that work the sound booth back here. And there's three back there today, but I think your brother Travis works back there. Brother Zeeserman's even jumped in and helped us out some, and 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 brother Nick uh, back there, and and maybe even a couple others. I don't know, uh, but these guys—that's not an easy job back there. That's not an easy job, and and they've got they've got to uh, stay on top of things and and watch for cues and 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 all kinds of stuff to keep things up and running and. I keep up with me up here on the monitor, and and uh, so uh, I appreciate them. And of course, yeah, for some it's never loud enough. For some it's too loud, and they gotta they gotta balance all of that back there, and 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 then they gotta listen to me and do what I tell them. And uh, so um, when it comes down to it, you just listen to me and do what I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I appreciate you guys very much for what you do back there. All right, let's stand. Go to the word of the Lord. We are going to go to the last book and the last chapter of the Bible. Revelation chapter 22. The last book and the last chapter. And let me confess something before I start. It's been too long since I preached about this been too long and some of you that have served God for years you can remember how some of our pioneers preached about the coming of the Lord every service if it wasn't every service it was at least every other service and they preached on the coming of the Lord 
and and the pastor would preach it on Sunday, and he'd preach it hot, and then the evangelist well, in the revival would come on Monday, and he'd preach it hot, and uh, you you uh, you you understood the importance and uh, of what was getting ready to happen because you heard it constantly. You heard it so much every time you heard a trumpet, you looked up. And uh, uh, they, they would preach it. And, and uh, I, rem I remember him saying, uh, you don't go, to, don't go to movie theaters because you don't want to be sitting in a movie theater watching a worldly movie when the Lord comes back. And uh, which, that, that's some good counsel. That's some good counsel. They, I tell you what, they kept you righteous. They kept you righteous. So I want to know, I'm, what, I'm preaching today on three things. Three things you need to know about the Lord's coming. Three things you need to know about the Lord's coming. Je Revelation chapter 22, verse 7. The Bible says, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Skip down in the same chapter to verse 12. If you've got red letter edition, you're, you're going to see most of these words are in red letter. Verse 12 says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to as his work shall be. Skip down in the same chapter to verse 20. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Three things. Three things you need to know about the Lord's coming. Let's pray. God, in your precious name today, Lord, I pray, God, let, let, let this word come forth as the sound of a trumpet. God, let this word, not because of me or not because of my vocals, but God, because of the word, let it come forth as a trumpet. Let it, God, sink into the hearts and pierce, dividing asunder in soul and spirit. Let the word of God today come with power and with authority and anointing God to minister to this precious congregation today. Let the hand of God be upon us all to receive the word of God, not just to hear it, but to receive it. Not just to listen to it, but to receive the word of God. Lord God, let it take root within our hearts. Let it take root in our minds, our spirits. And God, preach to us today. Under the unction and the anointing of God, we pray. Lord, we'll give you all the glory. Why don't you lift your hands to God one more time? Lift your voices to heaven, God. We give you praise. Lord, we glorify the name of the Lord. We magnify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God, glory to God. Praise your name, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, that's it. One more time. That's it. Praise him. Let's give him praise. He's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. When I was preparing this message, there's an old Southern Gospel song. It says, what a beautiful day for the Lord to come again. You may remember that old song. Oh, if you like Southern Gospel, you've probably heard it. What a beautiful day for the Lord to come again. 
I, I, I ever since I received the Holy Ghost in 1989, I, from that time on, I had a, a, an understanding in my heart that Jesus could come at any moment. As a matter of fact, I had enough understanding before I got the Holy Ghost, before I came back to God. I understood that I, the life I was living and the sin I was living with, that if Jesus came back, I would not go. I, I understood that, that if Jesus come back before I made it right with God, before I came back to God and was restored and renewed in the Holy Ghost and living a holy life, I knew that I would be lost in eternity when Jesus would return. Uh, folks, that's a, that's a terrible feeling to wake up in the middle of the night and understand that eternity is just a breath away and eternity is just a moment away away and that you could step from this life to that life or the sound of the trumpet could come and you could go from this place at a moment understanding that there's a terrible weight when you understand that but when you're ready when you've got redemption on your side when you've been washed in the blood when you've been covered by the blood when your sins have been forgiven when you're full of the Holy Ghost and you're living a holy life and you're watching and you're waiting there's an anticipation in the spirit of God for the coming for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ Revelation the final book paints an incredible picture for us of the end time the only book of the New Testament devoted wholly to prophecy, some history, but mostly to prophecy, written by the Apostle John, John a prisoner on an isle he had, he had for preaching the gospel. He had been sent to the Isle of Patmos. And that, that didn't stop God from showing John the revelation. John may have been a prisoner of Rome. He had been, may have been secluded off to a prison island somehow. But God was still able to reach and talk to him. God was still able to, to speak to him. He said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Folks, the spirit of the Lord doesn't, isn't stopped by prison walls. The spirit of the Lord isn't stopped by situations and by circumstances. He may have been a prisoner, but he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And this revelation, verse 1 of Revelation 1, calls it the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's not just a revelation and a prophecy of end time. It is a revelation of the Almighty God. It is a revelation of Jesus Christ. Chapter 1 reveals Christ as priest and king standing in the midst of his church. Chapter 2 and 3, he is the judge and the counsel of the churches. In chapter 4, he is the one that is seated on the throne. In chapter 5, he is the one worthy to open the book, for he has redeemed us by his blood. Chapter 6 through chapter 18, he is the Lord of judgment. Chapter 19 through 20, he is the conquering king and the Lord of lords and king of kings. And chapter 21, he is the one who wipes all tears from our eyes. And in chapter 22, he is the one who is coming again. Again, he is the one who is coming again. Forty times in the Revelation, forty times in the Revelation, the word throne is used. John refers to the throne, the throne of God and the throne of Satan. We see worship in heaven. We see warfare on earth. And no matter how dark the day or how strong the forces of evil, the Lamb of God will always prevail. The Lamb of God will always win the victory. When you read the Revelation, one thing to keep in mind is that John was writing this during a period of tremendous persecution. The church was being persecuted. Domitian was the, uh, was the emperor of Rome at that time. He hated the church. He despised the church. And he was persecuting 
the church. The revelation was rent to it was written to encourage the church. It was a book that was that God gave to John on the Isle of Patmos, and John wrote it to encourage and strengthen the church during their time of persecution. So when John comes to the final verses of the final chapter, now let's get the picture in chapter 22. When John opens the chapter, John starts talking about that crystal river that starts that comes out from under the throne of God. He starts talking about the tree of life that's on both sides of that river. He mentions in just I think it's the third or fourth verse, he says, There is no more curse. The curse of sin is broken. I tell you that right there is worth shouting about. That right there is worth shouting. There ought to be a dance right there. There will be no more curse. The curse of sin that came in the, in the book of Genesis will be broken according to the book of the Revelation. Revelation 22, 6, Bible says, These sayings are faithful and these sayings are true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel unto his servants, the things which must shortly be done. And then he says in verse 7 of Revelation 22, Behold, I come quickly. And he's in the last chapter of the book. He's recorded the seals and the plagues. He's recorded the trumpets. He's talked about the Antichrist. He's talked about the, 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 uh, the, the false church and all of the things and all of the plagues that's going to come upon the world. And, and, and he's written all of that. But when he gets to the last book or the last chapter of the last book, John, God the Lord says, I've got one more thing to say. I want to remind the church. I I come quickly. I want to remind the church that this is not all there is. You're not bound to this world or to this life because I come quickly. I will come back even though I've gone away. I will come back. It's a prophecy with a promise. I will come back. And he that keepeth the saints of this prophecy, of this book, behold, I come quickly. We need to remind ourselves, and the first thing I want to tell you you need to know about the coming of the Lord is that it will happen in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. I come quickly. Quickly means soon. Quickly means without delay. Quickly means suddenly. I come quickly. It refers to three things in, in that one prophecy, that one scripture. It refers to the events of the prophecy that will occur before Christ's return. He said, I come quickly. There are going to be events that's going to happen. There's going to be events that's going to take place, and they will happen quickly. I realize it's been 2,000 years or so since those words were written by the apostle. It's been 2,000 years or so since he was in the spirit and God showed him the revelation but the word is still true and faithful. I come quickly. It doesn't matter how long it's been. The events have, ta have transpired one by one by one and we see them still happening today and I don't know if you realize it or not but the events of the end time have accelerated. All of a sudden we're seeing so many things happening. One thing right after to the other. The Bible says knowledge will increase and we have witnessed an explosion of knowledge over the past 50, 60 years. We've witnessed an, ex witnessed an explosion of knowledge. Technology has absolutely went to regions we never thought it would go. I remember reading an article. I remember reading an article years ago about computers and the inception of computers and how they've changed our world. And it quoted some people in the article, and I, I, went, I tried to find the article. I kept it, but I couldn't, I couldn't locate it. But it, it quoted some people in the world who had made some comments back in the early, early days of, of computers and back in the DOS days, and computers were start, starting to first materialize, and one computer would take up an entire room, a huge room, because it would be it would be so big that they that it had to have all that space to process all the information and and and, and uh, 
people would say, I think it was the president of IBM, if I'm not mistaken, the president of IBM said, said the day will never come that every person has their own computer. He, he, he made that statement. Uh, and, and there were other statements that, that talked about how computers, one man said computers are just here for a moment, but soon they'll be obsolete because they're just impractical and so forth. And yet I stand up here preaching from a computer. I have on my desk a laptop computer. I have other computers that are in my, at my home. My phone is a computer. My watch is a computer, and yet we would never own computers. Knowledge has increased exponentially over the past decades. We've witnessed it happen. We're witnessing prophecy happening right before our eyes. We're seeing the Bible being fulfilled right before our eyes. Wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, all of these prophecies taking place over and over again. But the one that shocked me, and back in in 1948, when Jews, Jerusalem or Israel became a nation, out of nowhere, out of nowhere, all of a sudden, the Jews have their own land, and they're back in Jerusalem. God established the nation again, and just a few years ago, the capital was recognized by the United States, and the embassy moved to Jerusalem. Folks, it's prophecy. It's end-time prophecy, and God is fulfilling it. It's happening quickly. For this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. The signs of the times are happening quickly. We're racing. We're racing. This generation is racing toward the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. This generation is on the fast track, and it could be any moment or any day. The gospel shall be preached in every nation. Do you realize at our last general conference, and we can't mention the nations because uh, the, the, it would put the, the people that are going into the nation's lives in danger, but at our last general conference, we opened up three brand new nations that the gospel had never been able to go into. But now we've got missionaries on site in those nations preaching one God, preaching repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. It's happening. It's happening. You see, it refers, the quickly refers to not your calendar, but God's calendar. It's not how long you think it's going to take. It's how long is it to God. And a day is a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. And if we take that literally, a thousand years as a day and a day is a thousand years, it's been two days. It's been two days since this scripture was spoken. It's not been that long. Behold, I come quickly. Behold, I come quickly. Behold, I come quickly. Oh, you got to understand. You got to grasp today. We're in the time. We are the generation upon whom the ends of the world have come. We are the generation. We are living in the shadow of the rapture of the church. For the Lord himself, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord, and so shall we ever be with the Lord.
Behold, I come quickly. First says, or Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. Behold, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. First Corinthians 15 verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be Changed. Jesus is coming back and Jesus is coming back quickly. He's coming back and he's coming back quickly. If you're waiting, if you're waiting, well, I'll get right. I'll get right when the trumpet sounds. My friend, before your knees hit the floor, it's going to be over. Before your knees even touch the ground, it's going to be over. When the Lord comes back, you're not going to have time to call the pastor. Matter of fact, I won't be here. And you're not going to have time to find an altar or get to the church. And there's not going to be here anybody here to open the church when you get here. There's not going to be a soul here to open the door because we're going to be gone in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump of God. We're going to be gone. Now, I know some of your husbands are going to identify with what I'm, what I'm getting ready to say. Yesterday, yesterday, when my wife left, from when my wife left to come down here to finish getting ready for the party and get everything together, before she walked out the door, she said, "I want the family room straightened up. Okay, correct me, Sister Johnson. Okay, could you might have been in there. Clean up the family room. We got Layla coming. So, uh, and I've got, she said, I got stuff strung out everywhere. So I, I need the family room cleaned up. And, and, and so as soon as she walked out the door, you know what I did, brother. Brother, you know exactly what I did. I went and got my book and I sat down to read. <laughs> and I, I'm reading my book and, and, and just kind of, then every now and then I'd walk to the kitchen, get me a snack, and come back and sit that down. And get me a soft drink, sit back down. You know how it is. You men, you identify with this. You get it. And then you look at the clock and you say, oh, no. <laughs> and I ran to the back room and I got the sweeper out and the broom and the dustpan. And I headed straight to the family room because time was running out. And I had to get it done. And so I'm in there and I am sweeping away i'm moving stuff i'm folding tables up uh, that she'd had out doing some stuff i put it away and I, I took all the things on that and put it in another place just you know that's just called relocation and <laughs> but i was running out of time and i had i had to I had to get it done. I had to buckle down, and I had to get it done just in the nick of time, just in the nick of time. But, folks, it's not going to be that way with the coming of the Lord. You're, you're, you're not. Yeah, you're, I, I'm preaching right now. You got a two-minute warning. I, I, I'm preaching right now because the clock is ticking down to midnight. And right now is your opportunity in the nick of time. Right now is your chance to get it right with God. Revelation 19, 7, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife <coughs> and his wife hath made herself ready. She's made herself ready. That's talking about preparation. You folks that, uh, you, you, especially you brides, you know what it takes to get ready for a wedding. You know the preparation it takes 
to get ready and the planning it takes to get ready and the day of what you got to do to get ready for a wedding. You got you got all this that's got to be done when when uh, when it's time for the wedding, folks. Get you got to get ready for the coming of the Lord and the marriage supper of the Lamb and the coming of Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. If you're planning on playing around in sin and then think you're going to have time to get right with God at the last moment, at that last, last second when the, when the trumpet sounds, you are in for a rude awakening. You are in for a rude awakening. Before your knees hit the carpet, the rapture is going to be over with. It's going to be done. He said it in verse 12, I come quickly. I come quickly. I come soon. I come soon. Verse 12 tells us something else. It tells us that when the Lord comes back, and the second thing you need to know about the coming of the Lord is that the Lord is going to come with his rewards. He's going to come with reward with me to give every man according to his work. <laughs> so you got prophecy with promise. And you got prophecy with reward. He's coming back, and he's not coming back empty-handed. He's coming back to bless those. He's coming back to give to those that have worked and labored in the kingdom, who've been faithful to the kingdom. There's a concept. There's a concept that kind of, kind of matches up with the concept around Christmas time for a lot of folks. Do you remember that old song? Better, uh, how'd it go? Better, naughty or nice. Better watch out, you better not cry, better not pout. I'm telling you why Santa Claus is coming to town. Okay. Well, that some people get that same mentality with the Lord because they sing that song to the kids, and they tell the kids, you better be good or you're not getting anything. But then that, those kids are demons all year long. <laughs> and those kids that were told, you better be better not pout and you better not cry. Oh, they get well, they walk out on Sunday morning. You can't walk in the living room for the presence. You can't step over the presence to get in there. They've been loaded up with so much and they've been given so much. And it didn't matter, it didn't really matter whether they were good or whether they were bad. They they got it anyway. And some people get that mentality with God. They get that mentality with the Lord because they think, well, it doesn't really matter much. I, I've been to the water and I've been baptized and i got the Holy Ghost. And so I, I'm just going to go to heaven and, and get my reward. Well, you'll be born again and you'll make it to heaven. But your reward comes because of your works. Your, wor wor your wor reward comes because you have labored in the kingdom and you've been faithful to the kingdom of God. And God is going to bless you. As his work shall be. That is going to determine your blessings in heaven. That's going to determine your reward in heaven. He's coming. He's coming quickly. But he's coming with reward. He's coming to bless those that have come. So you got prophecy with promise. And you got prom prophecy with, pro with reward. But I want you to notice something else. In verse 20, verse Revelation 22, in verse 20, he which testifieth these things saith, surely, it's not, it's not behold, it's surely, you can count on it, surely I come quickly, amen. Those are the words of the Lord, but listen to the words of the Apostle John, even so, come Lord Jesus, even so come, Lord Jesus. John, in his prayer, as he closes the book of Revelation, he says, my heart's desire, God, my, my fervent prayer, the one prayer I've got to pray when I get to the end of writing what you have shown me, I've got to pray for you to come and for you to come quickly. Even so, Lord Jesus, come Probably one of the most revealing things about a person is what they say when they pray. One of the most revealing things that exposes a person of who they are and their spirituality 
is what they say when they pray. A lot of prayers reveal people have an intense love for the Word of God because when they pray, they're quoting the Word and they're quoting Scripture. And they, they've got an intense love for the Word of God. So they've hid the Word of God in their, in their heart, and they pray. They pray the Word. So you learn that when they pray. And a lot of prayers, some people pray, and you can tell they're always praying for other people. They're, you hardly ever hear them say uh, anything about for themselves, but they're always praying for others. And you can tell they're a selfless people, that they're, they're more concerned with the needs of other people. They're more concerned with what other people uh, are in need of. And so they pray and they, they stand in the gap for other people rather than saying, Lord, give me, give me, give me. They're saying, Lord, bless them, bless them, bless them. And so they pray for other people. Other people's prayers reveal how they think, how they think they are. And they, they, they pray, they tell everyone how much they, they love God and how they, 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 uh, they want to impress people with their own status, and, uh, their own accomplishments, and their own abilities. And so they pray that. And then some people pray, and they've used their opportunity to express what they think about something. So they, they use that in their prayer. But a lot of people, and a lot of people, you can tell their experience with God by the way they pray. Do they have a deep experience or do they have a shallow experience with God? You can, you can tell that by how they pray. So what was it about John that we can understand about his prayer? What was it about John when he closed the book of the Revelation? When God had pulled back the curtains of heaven and let John see heaven as no man had seen heaven before, John, when he got to the end of the book, after seeing everything he'd seen, John said, even so, Lord Jesus, come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. I know we hear about people. We hear about people that have uh, uh, claim they have uh, a peak into uh, a glorious place that they, they've, God took them to heaven or, or something like that. And, and they talk about it and how that experience, they, they, they experience that. But the truth and the, the, where the rubber meets the road is did that experience change their life? Did that experience change who they were? Because if it was a real experience and they got a true glimpse of glory and they got a true glimpse of heaven, it's going to change what they believe. It's going to change how they live. It's going to change how they walk. It's going to change how they pray. And John said when he got to the end of it all and he'd seen the throne and he had seen the elders around the throne and he had seen the multitudes and the cherubim flying around the throne and John saw the thousands from ten thousands from every kindred and every tribe and every tongue. When John got to the end of the revelation, John said, the only thing I can pray and the only thing that's on my heart is even so come. Even so come. God, I've seen a glimpse. Come. God, I know what it's going to be like. Come. God, I know what heaven is. Come. God said, when it comes down to it, there's a desire in my heart, and my heart's passion is for you to come, Jesus. I know, I know what's here, and I know what's there. Lord Jesus, come. I carry the burden down here. I felt the glory there. Even so, come. Lord Jesus, Revelation 22, 8, and John, I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me 
these things. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you I didn't I didn't bring the uh, didn't put the rest of the verses in my note. But when he knelt before that angel, that angel stopped him and said, "You don't bow to me. I, I'm just an angel. You don't bow to me. I, I, I'm just I'm just a servant of God. You bow to him. You bow to God. That's the one you bow to, not to an angel, folks. We don't glorify. We believe in angels, but we don't deify angels." We know there are angels. There's angels in this room right now, but they're here as, as ministering to the heirs of salvation. They've come to minister to you. When you get up and walk out of this church, angels are going to walk out with you because the angel of the Lord is encamped around them, around you. But let's understand, we don't worship angels. They're just servants of the Most High. They are not God. We worship God, Jesus Christ and him crucified. John said, I've been affected so much by what I've seen. I fell down and I worshiped. And the only prayer I can pray after seeing all of this is even so, even so, come. Come, Lord Jesus. What are you saying, Brother Johnston? I'm saying the third thing you need to know about heaven is you need to have heaven on your mind. The third thing you need to know about heaven is it doesn't need to be something you just think about one day when the preacher preaches it. And it's not just something you need to think about one day when you just read about it in the scripture or devotion out of your devotion book. It's a place that you should have a hunger and a thirst and a desire to go to. More than anything else in this world, more than anything else, there should be no tug on you greater than the tug of heaven. There there should be no pull on you greater than the pull of heaven. There should be nothing on this world that could confine you here uh, outside of what God has for you in heaven. I'm telling you, heaven's going to be worth it all. It's going to be worth it all. Hallelujah. 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 I've lived with a tug on my heart. Since February 5th, 1989, I've lived with a tug on my heart, tugging me to heaven, pulling me to heaven. You know what gets me through, Sister Holman, when the times are hard and tough and, and, and the burden seems too heavy? I've got a tug on me, and I'm feeling heaven. I'm feeling heaven. I've got a view of heaven. I can go through it all. I can endure every long mile and every hard trial because of heaven, because I've got a place of redemption. I'm going to get to see what John saw. I'm going to see the throne and one that sits upon it. I'm going to see the angels and the cherubim. I'm going to hear the elders sing, glory, holy, holy is the Lord God almighty. I'm going to join the thousands and ten thousands in in heaven. It's not going to be a place where there's only a few people out of every kindred, every tongue, every tribe, every nation. We're going to gather around the throne and we're going to sing to the glory of God. Heaven. 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 Hallelujah. We need a fresh vision of heaven. Hallelujah. I wanted to get a prop today, and I just didn't know where to find it. Probably one of you have it, and you'll, you'll come to me after church and say, I wish you'd have called me. I had that. But I wanted to get one of those big magnets, one of those big magnets that construction guys use when they're doing a lot of construction and they're wanting to get all the nails up and pieces, fragments of metal. So they walk around the place and they're using one of those big magnets. And those magnets are picking up all these nails and stuff. And I was, 
I was going to put that, put a table right here. And I was going to put all different materials on it, different types of stuff, some plastic, some metal, some glass, different things. And I was going to lay them on this table. I was going to take that magnet. And I, I said, I'm going to tell you, this is what it's going to be like when the trumpet sounds. Because you take that magnet and you place that magnet over top of all the items on this table. And you're going to see some of those items just start pow, just start shooting up, connected to the magnet. But there's going to be a lot of items on that table that aren't compatible with the magnet. They're not compatible with the magnet. And so those things are going to be left behind because they're not compatible with the magnet. And for when the Lord comes, when the rapture happens, the only things that's going to lift off this earth are things that are compatible with the thing that's pulling it up. The only things that's going to connect are the things that are, that are attracted to the magnet. And if it's not attracted to the magnet, if there's not a pull, a tug, like heaven is tugging us, if there's not a tug, then that's going to be left behind. And it won't go. That's what the rapture is going to be like when the Lord comes back. Because it has to be, the item has to be made right. Have the right consistency. Have the right material. Because if it does, that's when it'll go up. If it's been washed in the blood of the Lamb, God will draw it from the earth because there'll be a tug that'll pull it up. And let me tell you something. That tug, if that magnet is up here, that tug still exists. It's not till it descends that it gets to a certain height. Like when the Lord comes back that that rises up to meet it in the air. The rapture of the church. Three things you need to know about the coming of the Lord. Behold, I come quickly. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, I know there are mockers. The Bible said there would be. There are mockers that say, where is his coming? How long have you been saying he's coming? Where's his coming? Surely, he said, I'll come. The Lord's coming back. It's not my time. It's not your time. It's his time. But he said it's quickly. He'll come with his reward, and his reward for you will be determined by your works. But he's, I'm not saying you're saved by your works. You're not saved by your works. Your reward is determined by your works, by what you do. And the third thing you need to know is that you need to have that tug of heaven. You need to have a fresh vision. John had it. He said, I've seen it. I've seen it. Lord, come. Probably one of the hardest things John ever had to do was to open his eyes when the vision was gone and no longer see the vision of heaven. Even so, come quickly. And John closes his book. 
closes his book with one last altar call. And in verse 17, put verse 17, chapter 22. One last altar call. John says this, and the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. One last altar call, he said, from the book of the Revelation. Come. You can come. You can be born again of water and of spirit. You can live a holy, separated life. You can dedicate yourself to the kingdom of God. Won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you stand with me today? And if you want to make it to heaven, you want to make it to heaven, why don't you step out today? and make your way to the front of this church. You want to make it to heaven. I want to make it to heaven. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. Even so, come. I want to make it to heaven. Just come as you come. Just lift your hands as you're up. When you get up here, just go ahead and, and, and start reaching into the presence of God. God, I need a fresh vision. I need a fresh vision of heaven. I need a fresh vision of heaven. Oh, oh. 